Hello and welcome to the first episode of Damien's Midweek Markets in 2021. Now, a lot has happened since the last episode that I made in December. So let's have a quick run through. If you remember, there were some key market moving events that were going to potentially occur. One of them was the US government signing off on a stimulus package. Well, that occurred worth around 900 billion US dollars finally, which the market took um, in good faith and that pushed up equity markets. On top of that, we saw Brexit finally get signed off. The agreement between the European Union and the UK about how things would work once the transition period came to an end was finalised. And here we are in 2021, having broken free of the European Union. Now, that has obviously had an impact on asset prices, which I will come on to. And the other thing is we've had the rollout of the vaccine in the UK and across the world, actually, a number of vaccines. All these things have been net positive for risk assets generally. But of course, we've also seen the new variant of COVID-19 COVID come to the fore. We've seen lockdowns come back around the world, national lockdowns, which if they go on for a long period of time, could have an impact on economic growth like they did in 2020. Now, just to give you a rundown, I talked about the Santa Rally, if you remember, just before Christmas, would, they, would it appear and about how the odds were favourable, particularly with it being a US election year. Well, the Santa Rally came to town. I mean, just to give you a run through, the emerging markets were up about 5.8% in December. Asian equities are about 58 as well. Uh, we had Japanese equities up around 3.6%. We had the All World Index, so that's general index of all equities around the world abroad, mix up around about 3.7%. The S&P 500 up a similar amount. The FTSE 100 was up around 3%. And the laggard was European equities, but that was still up around 2% on the month. So you can see markets are in a real risk-on mode. And at the end of 2020, perhaps it was quite fitting that we saw the S&P 500 go out on an all-time high. So that just shows you the euphoria in markets is almost as if any risk asset is going to go up. It's almost like a buy anything rally at the moment, which in itself has its risks and will get some people slightly concerned. But there are lots of reasons, as I've just mentioned. And of course, don't forget all the liquidity we're seeing from central banks. And there has been a hint, actually, as a side note, that the Bank of England could potentially cut rates again in 2021. Well, that's if you listen to the money markets out there that are betting that we could see another rate cut in the UK before 2021 is out. Now, what it means, we've seen some slight repricing of assets in the uh, recent weeks, obviously with a rally, but as the new year started, I mean, the FTSE 100 is out of the traps, it's flying, it's up around about 3% as I make this video, but we have started to see elements of repricing coming in. If I just focus on the pound, for example, to start with, I mentioned before Christmas that the pound was trying to break higher above that $1.35 mark, and to keep an eye on it, and in fact, when the whole the Brexit was given its final sign off. You would think that the pound would have rallied strongly against the dollar, but as I mentioned before Christmas, a lot of it was already priced in, all that good news. And so what we saw was the pound strengthen only slightly against the dollar. But as the time's gone on and we've gone into the new year, we've seen it strengthen a bit. We're up around about one dollar thirty six. So we're seeing some strength in the pound, nothing too crazy, but of course that's been held back on the flip side by the national lockdown that's been announced and of course the rising COVID cases. So it's like two parts to the story. And the other thing that's actually buoyed the pound and the dollar exchange rate, it's not necessarily Brexit, it's actually the weakness in the US dollar. So the dollar has continued to tumble and as it tumbles, it's pushing up commodities so that because they're denominated in dollars, it's been largely positive for US stock markets. And of course, it's been positive for emerging markets. If you remember, if you go back to what I just said at the beginning of the video and listing all of those markets and how well they've done in December, you would notice that the emerging market equity indices have actually done relatively well. And that's partly, or in a large part, because of the risk on elements of market and the weakening dollar. But as we go into 2021, we've got an interesting narrative. Now, you remember where the US election uh, back in November and markets were euphoric after that. And we talked about this an idea of a blue wave. Well, in the US, as I make this video, there is two US Senate runoff elections going on. And one of them has actually been declared in favour of the Democrats. And we're awaiting the result of the second one. What it means is that if the Democrats win that, then they will take control 
of the Senate, and it means they will have control of the, of the whole of Congress, both houses, and of course the presidency, and that's why it's called a blue wave. Now this was something the market was concerned about going into the election, the implications, because what it would mean is that the Democrats and Joe Biden have a largely unchecked power in the US government, and it would change the dynamic. So one of the things they think could happen if we do see this blue wave actually materialise finally is that we could see a new wave of stimulus from the US government because Joe Biden was actually uh, very positive and vocal on that point. If he managed to gain enough power, that's what he would want to do. But of course, what that's done is it's weakened the dollar because if you have more stimulus, it will weaken the currency, whether it's from the government or whether it's from a central bank, in this case, the US Federal Reserve. So we've started to see markets try and reprice the situation because obviously we didn't have a blue wave before Christmas. And what that means is that if we start stimulating the economy or the uh, US government starts stimulating the US economy alongside the US Federal Reserve, then we will start to see the US economy grow aggressively. Presumably that's the point of doing it after all. But it would also mean you're likely to see inflation because obviously if the economy starts to heat up, you are likely to see inflation. Now, if you do, that means that the market is starting to reprice to take allowance of the fact that we might start finally see some inflationary upward pressures, which has meant that US Treasuries have suddenly sold off aggressively in the last day or so. And it means that bonds are looking less attractive. It means that actually technology stocks, because they have a close tie with yields, if we see yields spike, then it, it tends to be bad news for technology stocks. So if you uh, go and look at your stock up on your phone today, you will notice that the NASDAQ 100 in America is doing poorly compared with the Dow Jones, for example, which is much more old school industries in that particular index. So we're starting to see some element of repricing as people try and take account of these potential risks. And of course, we're having a similar thing in a way with UK equities and Brexit, because now we're, we finally had some certainty there is some attraction in the valuations of UK equities. Of course, we've got the whole COVID scenario still to work out. But we've, that's one of the reasons why UK equities have started 2021 particularly well and are outperforming, say, US equities, by, uh, for example. We're seeing Bitcoin rally. We're seeing gold rally. Again, alongside those commodities, it's really a, a US dollar play. If a dollar weakens, these assets have been correlated in a way that they move in the opposite direction. So when the dollar weakens, then we're seeing Bitcoin rally, we're seeing gold rally, we're seeing uh, US equities rally and other commodities rally. So there's not a lot more to the narrative than that. I know we hear lots of people talk about Bitcoin taking over the world and all these things, but at the moment it's largely down to a very simple dynamic to do with currencies. Now, we're seeing this element of repricing going on. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming days and weeks. Will we see money move into UK equities and continue to do so? Keep an eye on the FTSE 250, for example, with a national lockdown, then that is bad news for the UK economy and therefore uh, domestic companies, which are much more, they make up a larger portion of the FTSE 250 because most of those uh, their earnings in that particular index come domestically, unlike the FTSE 100. It'll be interesting to see what happens because don't forget, when we had the first lockdown and the coronavirus pandemic started to pick up, then some of these sell-off did happen to a little bit later. But maybe now with the stimulus that's being announced continually, don't forget central banks are still in a accommodative mood. And as I say, there's rumours perhaps of more stimulus coming, then investors are going to keep buying any dips that they see. So it's going to be an interesting few days and weeks ahead, particularly as we see what happens with COVID-19 and US politics in particular. So that is it for this week on Damien's Midweek Markets. A lot has happened in the last couple of weeks, and we just need to see what happens in the next few days and weeks and let the dust settle as we break into 2021 and see what the actual themes that are starting to drive markets are. Now, as ever, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do Damien at moneytothemasses.com is the email address. Twitter, money to the masses with the number two. You can get hold of me on Instagram. You can get hold of me on Facebook. I nearly forgot. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.